We have now had five straight trading days in triple-digit moves. Traders have been busy over those days, but investors probably haven't felt much. If you add it all up, we've lost only about 60 points on the Dow Jones Industrial Average in these wild five trading sessions. MKM Partners' Katie Stockton says despite the recent slide in the markets, stocks are still poised to continue higher in the long term. But Peter Schiff of Euro Pacific Capital says choppy waters are ahead. Good to see you both. Katie, let me kick it off with you because you wrote in a note today that while the Standard & Poor's is in a corrective period, long-term uptrend is still intact. What's the basis for that? Why do you think it's still intact? That's right. Well, we still, of course, have higher highs and higher lows in place, and our intermediate and long-term momentum models are still very much positive, even though there has been, of course, a loss of short-term momentum. And I'd really remind everybody that the S&P 500 recently reached a new all-time high, having exceeded resistance at its 2000 and 2007 highs. So this correction phase is actually very constructive, in my opinion, having been the first pullback following a pretty massive breakout, and it's done so without breaking any key support levels, in my opinion. So to me, ultimately, it should provide a buying opportunity. All right, Peter, you, you're on the other side of that. You say bond yields have rebounded. How much of an impact is that going to have on stocks? Well, I think investors are much too complacent here. I would agree. Long, long term, sure, the stock market's going to go up in dollars because the dollar is going to keep losing value. By the way, it hit a four-month low today against the euro. That should be uh, troubling for people. But you know, I think people are underestimating just how much interest rates are going to go up, how fast rates are going to rise, and what the impact's going to be on the economy, on the housing market, on the stock market, on, on the banks, and on the government's ability to service its debts. So how big of a sell-off would you expect then? Well, unless the Fed, and I do expect the Fed uh, to taper back the tapering talk. Remember, for years, they were talking about an exit strategy. And I always said that they were bluffing. They have no exit strategy. They still don't. Now they don't even talk about exit. They just talk about tapering. But ultimately, they're not going to do that. They're going to increase the size of their monthly QE. That's the only way to stop the bond market from imploding. And they will do that until they can't do it anymore. Yeah. Katie, are investors going to see this pause in the market's run as an opportunity to get in? Are you still betting on the buy on the dip? I'm still betting on it. And, of course, when we see a correction, it never feels good, and that's what's happening. And it actually has affected some of the sentiment indicators that we track positively. So they're not at extreme levels, but it's pretty constructed to have seen what had been arguably an overly bullish market in terms of retail investor sentiment sort of retrace from that uh, overly bullish level. So to me, this is a, an opportunity. What I'd like to see now is short-term momentum improve. So I think it's only a matter of days to maybe a couple of weeks before we do see that. Meanwhile, we have a little consolidation phase in place, which tends to be very frustrating for a lot of people. It represents a relative uh, sort of balance think, between you know, supply and demand. What, what I think we need a much bigger pullback, though, to, 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 to get some fear back in the market and to take the Fed out of the game. You know, I said the Fed is just bluffing with all the talk of tapering because they know we have a phony recovery and the minute they take away the monetary stimulus the whole a recovery illusion is going to fade but they have to maintain this posture but we do get a meaningful pullback in the bond market which brings down the stock market and the housing market starts to roll over again the fed is going to have to come clean and start talking about expanding its its monthly qe and that's what the market's going to need to go higher again but again it's an inflationary illusion the underlying fundamentals beneath the economy economy and the stock market are getting worse, not better. Yeah, but maybe. But at the same time, what are the alternatives, Peter? I mean, if I'm going to take my money out of stock, where well, am I going to get any kind well, of return to dollars anywhere? or to the U.S. stock market? To the U.S. stock market. No, you, you're right. You can't be, you can't be in the bank. You're, you're going to lose. Inflation is going to wipe you out. You can't buy the long end of the curve in, in the bond market. So, look, you've got to look around the world and figure out where you're going to store your wealth. I think there are better places than the U.S. stock market. I'd rather be in the U.S. stock market than the U.S. bond market, even though I think we've got a bigger correction coming. But I'd rather be invested globally. I'd rather look at foreign stocks. I still like gold and silver, even though the sentiment is, is so negative now. In fact, that's one of the reasons that I like it even more. 
before. Uh, and you can look at some of these gold stocks. They've actually collapsed in price. So if you, yeah. want, if you want to have some real upside, you can look at those markets. But you have to understand that we still have a real crash ahead of us in the United States that we have to deal with. 2008 wasn't the crash. The real crisis is still coming because we didn't solve any of the problems. The government, the Federal Reserve made all those problems worse. And so we have to deal with this. And it's going to be better, I think, if, you, if, you're, if your assets are as far away from the U.S. as possible when yeah, that what, happens. What, what is this? You, you keep saying crash. I mean, how, how <laughs> significant a crash are you expecting? Haven't you been predicting this for years and it still hasn't happened? <laughs> well, it's in the process of happening, and many of really? my predictions have come true. But we have to, get, we have to prepare ourselves for the fact that interest rates are going to go way up. And when they do, all those banks that we built, bailed out because they were too big to fail, they're all going to fail again. And this time, we're not going to be able to bail them out. The housing market isn't finished going down. It has to go down more. And the government cannot afford to, to pay the interest on the national debt, let alone retire it when interest rates go up. So we're going to have to come to terms with these massive macroeconomic imbalances of spending too much, of borrowing too much, of not producing right. enough, not exporting enough, not investing enough, all these things that the Fed that is papering over with QE, we're going to have to deal with these problems. And they're much more massive today than they were in 2008. So if you thought that downturn was bad, you ain't seen nothing yet. Katie, do you have any reaction to that real quick? I do, of course. Obviously, I look at things from a technical standpoint, not a macroeconomic standpoint. But I would highlight that the 10-year Treasury yield has actually been positively correlated with the S&P 500. And again, I would remind folks that we've broken out from a 13-year trading range, and that projects upside not only in the months to come, but also years to come. So why fight the momentum? Just try to be on the right side of the trends, which, of course, in gold and silver is very much lower. All right. We'll leave it there. Thanks to you both. We appreciate it, and we'll see you soon.